The population of Europe is about 750 million people or about 10% of the world. Russia is the largest by land area and also most popular with 150 million people. Turkey and Germany are second and third with about 80 million people each. The Vatican City is the smallest with a population of one, just the Pope and some cardinal birds and penguin nuns. Joking aside, the Holy City has 800 people. The largest cities in Europe are Istanbul with 15 million people, Moscow with 12 million people and London with 8 million. Life expectancy is one of the highest in the world. Also the population of Europe is much older than other continents because people have fewer children. Northern Europeans are the least religious while the Balkans and the Black Sea regions are the most religious. I think it has to do with other religions being close to the border. Northern Europe is close to the polar bears and wolves, so they don't practice religion, so there's no threat to your belief. Warmer countries tend to be more religious too. In this segment, you will learn the answers to the following question. What is the best Dutch novel? Who was the Dostoevsky of Norway? What is the national epic of Poland? What are my recommendations for Russia and Romania? Which Portuguese writer is similar to Marcel Proust? Okay, let's begin in the land of the casinos and expensive yachts. Monaco. This is where the millionaires have congregated. When finance is not an issue, you don't have much appetite to create art. Poverty is a huge impetus for artistic creativity despite many thinking otherwise. Monaco has more casinos and expensive yachts than bookstores and libraries. Okay, I totally made that up. If you know the masterpiece of Monaco literature, leave a comment. Montenegro, The Mountain Wreath is a narrative epic poem by Pere II, Petrovic Negos, who ruled the country from 1830 to 1850. It is considered the finest work of Montenegrin and Serbian literature. It chronicles the region as a hub for three distinct cultures, the Orthodox Christian, the Ottoman Islamic and the Western European capitalism in the 18th century. It's based on a horrific event on one Christmas Eve in which converted Muslims were massacred and the narrative gets more philosophical dealing with the idea of independence from the Turkish rule. The region has experienced many massacres in the past centuries and the last one being in Bosnia in the 90s. Another novel to consider is A Hero on a Donkey by Miodrag Boltovic, which tells the story of Malik, a saloon keeper who joins the war against Italians in World War II. He's not your typical soldier, but very skinny like me, so everyone bullies and makes fun of him, and the story ends in tragedy. The Balkan has experienced plenty of tragic events due to cultural, linguistic, and religious clashes which resulted in the formation of many nation-states. Netherlands Max Havilar by Multatuli, published in 1850s, is about the Dutch East India Company in Indonesia, so it tackles colonialism. It is considered the Dutch Uncle Tom's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe, which brought to the public the attention dark side of slavery. In Max Havilar, too, for the first time, Dutch people became aware of its colonial activities in East India or modern-day Indonesia. For me, I fell in love with its storytelling, especially the first part set in Amsterdam. To learn more about Dutch literature, I made a video talking about 8 best Dutch novels of all time, covering some 150 years of Dutch literature. It's a long video because I go deep into each novel, some deeply psychological and some philosophical about the meaning of life. In a country that half of its territory falls below sea level, so the Dutch people have grown tall necks to stay above water. They keep building dikes and the sea keeps rising. North Macedonia. The country had a huge dispute with Greece, which finally resulted in a resolution that named the country North Macedonia and Greece being south, I suppose. Kalimata Vada translated to English The Great Water by Zhivko Shingo, published in the 1970s as a novel set in the aftermath of World War II in Macedonia and about how people deal with the communist takeover in the country. It depicts the contradiction of state ideology and people's belief in religion. The contradiction between borderless socialism and border nationalism. As is the case with most communist countries in the 20th century, a great deal of social and political engineering happened in an attempt to make the country more secular while pushing away religion and tradition at a huge social and psychological cost. Socialism was like a massive engineering project to tame a river that left villages flooded and people traumatized. 
It's also made into a movie in 2004. Norway. Norway has one of the most famous playwrights of recent centuries. Heinrich Ebsen is only second to Shakespeare in the number of plays performed around the world. For me, Hunger by Knut Hamsun is one of the best psychological novels from Norway. It's a very short novel, but it punches way above its weight and its depth. Written in the style of Fyodor Dostoevsky, Hunger is about a struggling writer in Oslo who experiences homelessness, imprisonment, and the most importantly, extreme hunger. It depicts how extreme hunger twists his mind into madness. Hunger's protagonist is a writer at the time when the country was not wealthy and had no welfare system. So the novel gives you a real insight in the country's past. If you like Dostoevsky's crime punishment, you will enjoy this novel. Knut Hamsun won the Nobel Prize in 1920, but later he became a bit naughty in openly supporting Nazi Germany. And today Norwegians have a mixed feelings about him. But there's no doubt about his writing, and he was a first-rate novelist. Poland Pantareusz by Adam Mickiewicz, set in the 19th century during the Napoleonic Wars of 1812, is often called the last European epic. Written in verse, it laments the fall of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Set in modern-day Lithuania, the story centers on a young count returning home from study abroad to his village, where he first witnesses but later participates in internal conflicts between different families in a village. Then the novel turns patriotic against the Russians who have occupied the area. The Poles were waiting excitedly for the Napoleon French army to come and liberate them from the Russians. But the Russians managed to defeat Napoleon in 1812, which is depicted in Tolstoy's War and Peace. Pan Tadeusz is primarily about the Polish nobility and their lifestyle, romance, marriage, and family feuds. It also tackles the religious themes of guilt and redemption in Catholicism, national independence, and sovereignty. It's not an easy read, but a worthwhile book if you have interest in the history of Europe and Poland. I learned a great deal about Polish culture, history, and people. Matuf on YouTube suggested Olga Tokarczuk, the Nobel Prize winner whose novel Flights is an international bestseller. Krzysztof, as well as Iago, suggested a 1936 short and satirical novel, Ferderurke, by Wiltord Gombrowicz. It's an influential novel in Poland, so much so that some of its phrases have entered the Polish language. Imagine you think your nightmares of high school tests, homework, and long hours are over once you become an adult. But in this novel, the protagonist is forced to return to school to experience it all over. Niesh, another viewer on YouTube, suggested Andrzej Sapkowski's work, who writes fantasy novels, and Tadeusz Browski's The Way to the Gas, ladies and gentlemen, which is a collection of short stories about, you guessed it, the horror of Nazi concentration camps. Portugal. The Nobel Prize winner, José Saramago's most famous novel is Blindness. The premise of this novel is really fantastic. One day, a man goes blind. Then he infects other people. Soon the whole town goes blind. It's an epidemic of blindness. This is really intriguing as to what happens when everyone is blind. Now there's chaos, there's violence, and there's terror. But one person is not blind. What does she do? She has every chance to exploit people. She can do whatever she wants. But she sticks by her husband. Why? Because she loves him. It's a short novel with a little undertone similar to the George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984 or a brutalist concrete wall with no windows. You don't need a window when everyone is blind. Saramago's writing is similar to Orwell's, and both were ideologically socialist at some point in their lives. Another name to mention is the poet Fernando Pessoa, and his Book of Disquiet is perhaps the greatest work of Portuguese literature. Pessoa's melancholic writing is similar to Marcel Proust's writing. Both were very sensitive men who battled with the meaning of life. James on YouTube suggested The Mayas by Jose Maria de Essa de Quiroz, published in 1888, which is taught in schools all over Portugal. The story is about young Portuguese aristocrats in the 1870s who enjoy womanizing and drinking booze while the country is going through a decline. In other words, when the ruling elite become hedonistic, the country goes south. By the time they wake up to the reality, the train has already gone. Portugal as a power exists no more. 
Romania Mircea Cortorescu is perhaps the most well-known Romanian novelist. His novels The Blinding and Nostalgia are both translated to English and both great novels. Anna Maria on YouTube suggested the 1922 novel The Forest of Tang by Livio Rebrano, also recommended by Marco, which deals with the events of World War I. Rebrano's other novel, Ayan, published in 1920, was also suggested by Marco. It tells the story of peasants and educated intellectuals juxtaposing financial wealth against intellectual wealth. The Moromet Family by Marin Preda, published in 1955 and 67 in two volumes, was also recommended by Anna Maria and two more viewers on YouTube. It tells the story of Romanian peasants, the issue of land ownership and reforms in the face of powerful changes brought by capitalism. David recommended Mihail Sebastian's for 2000 years which depicts Bucharest during the interwar period in the Romanian intelligentsia. Anna Maria also suggested a popular Romanian novel Bengal Nights by Mircea Iliad, published in 1933, is about a romance between a foreign man and an Indian woman based on a true story of an Indian woman, Maitre Devi, who was a protege of Tagore, the Bengal giant. In 1974, she wrote her own version of the story in a prize-winning novel. Russia I have about 4 hours worth of content on Russian literature, mainly on Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Turgenev, Pushkin, Lermontov, Gogol, including a video talking about top 10 Russian novels of all time. But here I have 3 novels I want to recommend to you. If you are a dedicated and hardcore reader, you must read War and Peace by Tolstoy. The reason is called the greatest of all time. It puts history on its head, not the deeds of some great men, but the combined forces of all those people who, from peasants all the way to the leaders. If you are interested in a psychological crime drama, then you must read Dostoevsky's Crime Punishment. You get to experience riding a roller coaster as you enter the mind of a murderer. How he plans, how he justifies, how he executes his plan, and how he has a meltdown. And finally, his journey to redemption. But if you have little time, then one of my favorite novels is Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. Perhaps a very underappreciated novel too. It's incredibly psychological, philosophical, but also immensely artistic. All these three novels were written during the 1860s, perhaps the most productive decade in Russian literature. I could talk about Russian literature all day, but I won't. I also have a video talking about top 10 Russian novels. San Marino Another tiny country with very few people and even fewer writers. For novel recommendations, go to Italy. Don't ask me why, San Marino is a country inside Italy. There must be some quirks of history which I have no clue about. According to the internet fact machine, San Marino has one university which Umberto Eco was involved in creating. Apparently, Eco also tried to create a university without a physical structure. I don't know what that means. Perhaps an online university? The country also has a prison and apparently there's only one person inside it who has his own library. So perhaps the only person who has time on his hand to read and write a novel. We'll wait and see.